He concludes, and then this is my own commentary, Tuggy, I say, identifies Yeshua not as very God in flesh, but merely as a unique man, a created being, viz. Jesus is reduced to a creature who was deified um, uh, deified by God the Father, making him worthy of being called God, quote-unquote, in special contexts, and worthy of human worship because God the Father commands it to be so. So you're understanding the basic uh, Unitarian position that I believe Dr. Tuggy is um, uh, appealing to. He believes that Jesus is worthy of worship. This is a common argument that Trinitarians would make against your average Unitarian. In other words, how can Jesus be worthy of worship unless he's God? Dr. Tuggy's form of Unitarianism would answer in this way. Well, Jesus is not God in the fullest sense of the identity, but because God exalted him and deified him and bestowed glory and majesty upon him, Jesus therefore is worthy of worship and must in fact be worshipped in special contexts as God. God in a sense of, of, of endowed with parts of the deity of God, enough of, enough of that deity that he could be worshipped as God in the special contexts. But nevertheless, um, Jesus is still a creature that was created by God at some point in time in history. And therefore, um, he's worthy of worship because God says it so. And if you respect God, then you must respect what God says is true of his son. Something to that effect. So that's basically what we're looking at. As we continue looking at this particular study, and we drop down a little bit further into this review, we have this appeal to mystery that I made in my um, commentary. And this is probably one of the strongest appeals that most Christians would make, an appeal to mystery. And so I want to start into this. We're not going to finish this tonight, but I want to um, uh, just take a bite out of it, and then we'll um, uh, go on further into the study. Uh, here's what I have to say in my own commentary. Dr. James Anderson of the School of Divinity of Edinburgh favors the approach of disambiguating the Trinity using nomenclature that is referred to by theologians as Mysterian. And you may have never heard the term Mysterian before, but I'm certain you're going to identify with much of it as I explain it to you. Anderson suggests that the mystery, quote-unquote, bound up in the language of the Bible in regards to understanding God's relationship to his son Jesus, may in fact be qualified and expressed as, and he has this term, macru, the letters M-A-C-R-U-E, which I say in my commentary is a proprietary term that I believe Anderson himself coined. So I think he owns this term. I'm pretty sure he made it up. We're going to examine the biblical possibilities of this actual biblical term mystery a bit further down into my own commentary. But for now, I say, um, just for now, just to, to take a bite of it, let's allow Dr. Anderson to explain this MACRU acronym in his own words. And we're not going to look at it tonight. We'll save this for next week. Or if you're a good Berean student, you can go ahead and go to my commentary at tetzatorah.com under Exploring the Shema and read the rest of the commentary for yourself. If you want to jump ahead, I'm fine with that. But for now, that'll do it for Exploring the Shema, discussions on the issues of Trinity.